Welcome to the second episode of Hall of Fame, where we spotlight pioneers of women in STEAM who helped get us to where we are today. Today we're going to be focusing on Wu Jianxiong. How many of you have heard of her? She's known as the first lady of physics, the Chinese Marie Curie, shout out to our last episode, and the queen of nuclear research. But before we get into all of that, let's get into some of Wu's background and how she became who she was. Wu was born on May 31, 1912 in the province of Jiangsu in China, the second of three children. Fun fact, Wu's parents had a tradition of using Jian as the first character of their children's names, followed by the characters Ying, Xiong, Hao, and Jie, meaning heroes and outstanding figures. So Wu's oldest brother was named Jian Ying, and her younger brother Jian Hao. Wu and her father were very close, and he helped to grow her passion for learning and the sciences, creating an environment full of books, magazines, and newspapers for her. Wu went to an elementary school and all-girls school funded by her father, and at age 11, Wu left to attend Suzhou Women's Normal School No. 2, a boarding school with classes for teacher training and then classes for regular high school. Teacher training was really competitive, but there was no charge for tuition and room and board. Wu's parents could have afforded the regular school for her, but she chose the more competitive option and was ranked 9th out of 10,000 applicants. In 1929, Wu graduated top of her class and went to National Central University in Nanjing and went on to teach in Shanghai. In 1930 to 1934, Wu studied at National Central University first in math, but then she transferred to physics and also became involved in student politics because at the time, relations between China and Japan were tense. She was elected as a student leader as she was such a top student and everyone felt that she'd be forgiven for her involvement in the organization. Because of this, she was really careful to focus on her grades and keep them up. She led protests such as sit-ins at the presidential palace in Nanjing and even met Chiang Kai-shek. She went on to study physics at the grad level and worked at the Zhejiang University. She was a researcher at the Institute of Physics at the Academia Sinica and went to U Michigan after working under Gu Jingwei who had done the same thing before and encouraged her to study abroad. In August of 1936, she and a friend, Dong Ruofen, a chemist, embarked on the SS Hoover to the USA and that would be the last time she'd see her parents. So kind of a sad end to part one, but without further ado, let's get into exactly what Wu did that made her so special. Picking up where we left off, after Wu heard that women weren't even allowed to use the front entrance at UMish, she decided she'd rather study at UC Berkeley. At the end of her first year at Berkeley, she applied for a scholarship, but because of prejudice against Asian students, she wasn't given one, so instead, she took a scholarship offer at Caltech. Her thesis had two separate parts, the first on Brehm Strahlung, or the electromagnetic radiation produced by the deceleration of a charged particle when deflected by another, typically an electron by an atomic nucleus, she investigated this using beta-emitting phosphorus-32, a radioactive isotope that's easily produced in a cyclotron. This marked Wu's first work with beta decay, a subject on which she would become an authority. Her second part of the thesis was about the production of radioactive isotopes of xenon produced by the nuclear fissure of radium. In June 1940, Wu completed her PhD and was elected to Phi Beta Kappa, a U.S. academic honor society. Despite multiple recommendations, she wasn't able to get a faculty position at a university, so she stayed a postdoctoral fellow at the Radiation Laboratory. On May 30, 1942, Wu married Yuan Jia Liu, a physician she had met at Berkeley who introduced her to the Radium Laboratory. Sadly, because of the outbreak of the Pacific War, both of their families couldn't attend the wedding. She became an instructor for naval officers at Princeton after finding work at Smith College too frustrating as she wasn't able to conduct research there and only was able to teach. In March of 1944, Wu joined the Manhattan Project's Substitute Alloy Materials Laboratories at Columbia. She helped develop the process for, use for separating uranium into uranium-235 and uranium-238 isotopes by gaseous diffusion. In September of the same year, Wu was contacted by the Manhattan District Engineer, Colonel Kenneth Nichols, after the project ran into a problem with the B reactor. They suspected Xenon-135 was the reason for this, and since Wu had done work on radioactive isotopes of Xenon at Berkeley, they found in her papers that Xenon-135 was the fault due to its large neutron absorption cross-section. After the end of World War II, Wu became an associate research professor at Columbia, and she planned to visit her family but was unable to because of the Chinese Civil War. When the communists came to power, her father wrote to her saying not to return, and Wu stayed at Columbia for the rest of her career. In 1952, she became an associate professor, in 1958 a full professor, and the Michael I. Popin Professor of Physics in 1973. 
Wu continued to investigate beta decay after the war, and the Wu experiment would happen now. Wu and the theoretical physicists Li Zhendao and Yang Zhenning questioned the law of conservation of parity, a hypothetical law of elementary particle physics. Parity was conserved for the electromagnetic interactions and the strong interaction, but it wasn't tested for the weak interaction and scientists just assumed that it would hold true. Wu's experiment showed that parity is not conserved under the weak nuclear interactions and the law of conservation of parity was invalid. This was a major contribution to physics and the development of the standard model. Li and Yang were awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1957, but Wu's role in the experiment wasn't publicly recognized until 1978 when she was awarded the Wolf Prize. So that's a brief overview of who exactly was Wu Jianxun, the basis of Li and Yang's Nobel Prize. If you didn't know who she was, I hope you now know a little more about her and can be inspired by her in some way. She, like Madame Curie, faced sexism and discrimination, but ultimately was a huge driving force for the advancement of physics.